The Blockbusters Podcast is proud to be a member of the Pod Bros Network. You can find us as well as other fantastic podcasts such as Pencil and Ink Review, Another Damn Trivia Show, and Language of Bromance at podbros.com, as well as on most other fine podcasting services. Now sit back, relax, and prepare to share and enjoy the Blockbusters Podcast. Welcome to this second in our little extra series we're doing that we're tentatively calling Film Spotlight, despite the fact that one person not has... Not confused this, with the film Spotlight. Yes, n- not about the film Spotlight <laughs> or the Film Wise Spotlight podcast that uh, I was on at one point. Well, as you can hear, I'm Paul. I'm Brian. And today we have on... Uh, someone that uh, you might recognise if you've been listening to these episodes in order that we put them out. It's uh, Stephen from the Story Breakers podcast. How are you doing? Welcome, Stephen. How are you doing, guys? Thanks for having me on again. Yeah. Oh, that, no problem. It, it's been uh, oh, a good 10 minutes. And <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, it just goes to show that I've done really well in the last episode. You didn't want to boot me off in this one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, you hung in there just enough that we're going to continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something could have come up, but it didn't, yeah. so you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God yeah. for that. <laughs> Wipe the sweat off your brow and we'll move forward. Yeah. All right, so this is the thing I came up with where... We wanted to have people on to talk about a film that they really like and a film that they really do not like. And so we'll start out by with what little we know about you. Myself and Brian need to guess which genre this film is going to be. In. Okay, do we have to pull together on a guess or are we each get our own? I, I would say we each go for one because I, I made two guesses in the first one. Yeah. I was by myself. So you pick a genre and I'll pick one. And we'll see if okay. either of us are right. Well, film you love, I uh, will go action. And I'm, I'm just gonna say noir. Just, uh, wow. just sort of an shot in the dark, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did Paul, either like, like, get, yeah. yeah, I think Paul is a bit closer. I wouldn't necessarily see. I think this is a bit mean because uh, I don't necessarily know what genre this would stay in. But uh, oh, I've cheap. gone for <laughs> their prestige from Christopher Nolan, the ah. uh, the magicians, the rival magicians. Okay. Yeah. I I definitely. Well, I think it is quite noir, one. really. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, it's it, it's a really nice film, I I thought. So yeah, I can see why you're having trouble with the the genre picking there. It is, <laughs> it is kind right. of all over the place. IMDb says drama slash mystery slash sci fi. So uh, okay, slash guess, everything slash <laughs> everything else. Yes. All right. Well, mm-hmm. well, obviously I have seen this film, and uh, Brian, have you seen this? One? I have as well. You have as well. Okay. Well, uh, but I would like to be resold on it. That's the thing. Yeah. So. Sell us on this film. Why should we watch The Prestige? Well, um, when I went to see this in the cinema, I had no idea what it was. It was just myself and my girlfriend. We queued up. It's like, what's on now? We'll go see this movie. I didn't even know who Chris Nolan was at the stage. I think this was his movie, first movie after Batman Begins. So he wasn't really that kind of renowned. If you didn't know Memento, you wouldn't have known him. Um, but when I went to see it, I didn't get the movie the first time. I was like, yeah, okay, it's really, really good. It's a a nice little twist at the end. Yeah, okay, cool. So the second time I watched it that I really understood that the whole movie is based on how to tell a magic trick. It's all about the uh, the prestige. It's like the three stages of telling the magic trick. And in that movie, he performs every single one of them. And he's telling you every single thing that's happening. But... And he's saying it over and over again. You just don't want to see the truth. You don't want to see the truth. But then when it comes to the end of the movie... On the second view, and you realize, holy shit, oh, okay, now he's been putting it in my face the whole time, and I'm still too stupid to understand it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was great. It's the first time i ever seen a movie that performed uh, the, what it wanted to achieve in the screenplay as well on the audience. You know, it's, it's very. there's not many movies that can do that, I don't think. Um, I've never seen a movie like that before. Like Jurassic Park can't get away with that. There is no dinosaurs in real life. <laughs> <laughs> you watch your mouth. <laughs> Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> now, obviously, th- this film came out the same time as The Illusionist. Yeah, so another it's... one of those double yeah. Uh, plot. Yeah. The, this is, I think the Prestige is the Bug's Life to 
The Illusionist Ants. Ants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and there was also one other one that came out, also starring Hugh Jackman, where he was also a magician. Uh, <laughs> now, which one's uh, Armageddon and which one's Deep Impact? Yeah. That's what I wanted. <laughs> well, <that's, laughs> With the I got, <laughs> but, well, now that is the question, because I have always been partial to The Illusionist over The Prestige. Ooh. But yeah. I will admit that there are many good things about The Prestige, including David Bowie. Yes, as Tesla, he it's is funny. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Even uh, Andy Serkis is amazing in it. Like he was, he was pretty much nobody. I think at that point, like not nobody, but you know, he wouldn't be the Gollum. You know, everyone knows him as Gollum now, but he wasn't back then, and he was even stunning as an actor. Yeah, that, if if I recall, there's not really any bad acting choices made in it. Although I, <laughs> my wife is not a fan of the person who played the wife. And was it? Uh, um, the the, the uh, the one who was stuck in the water tank. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's uh, funny. I don't think that's the actress's fault, though. I think it's Christopher Nolan's biggest problem. As a, his flaw as a director is he cannot make a compelling woman, you know, a character. He just, every single woman in all of his movies are just bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, yeah, what that says. <laughs> We're reading too much yeah. into his life there. But. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah, think about any of his movies. You know, you cannot think of a good female character that he's I'm ever. Trying, yeah, I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to right now. I, I'm like, I, I uh, might argue Catwoman in the third Batman, but she's not on screen very yeah, much. So. I mean, I she does call her. I always call her Frenchie Batman. from the <laughs> from Marion Cotillard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a little bitchy in that. <laughs> a little bit more. But even Catwoman so, screws over Batman at the beginning. You know, uh, yeah. midway through uh, the Dark Knight mm-hmm. Rises. You know, it's just. There's no trust to her at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, that is tough. All right, yeah, but yeah, I would say this film is one of those that brings something different to the table the second time you watch it, like you kind of uh, alluded to. Um, there's, you know, treats in it for you the whole way that you weren't aware of. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, well, then my next question mm-hmm. that, that kind of ties into is, what about this film speaks to you then? Why is it that you chose it? Um, I just love the mystery of it. I love the uh, I love the the screenplay. Uh, the fact that it's not a linear story. Uh, like when we do story breaks episodes, if we try to veer off the standard, you know, uh, A to B to C in a story arc, it's it's very difficult to kind of wrap your head around it. But in this, it's like Memento, where he's hopping all over the place all the time. The timeline is screwed up, but yet it makes perfect sense. You know this, and I just love the the um, the graft, I suppose, that went into the story and the the details, the minute details. Like he must be fiddling with that like for so long, just to get it to that pinpoint. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, there there are definitely loads of little things in it that needed to be in there for the whole thing to work, and you just don't realize. Okay. <laughs> so. I, I do believe on this, we are trying to remain spoiler-free on these, is that correct? Because yeah, we want people yeah. to see them. As much as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but there is, the only gripe, there is a huge plot hole, which has been brought up in many YouTube videos, that alludes to what happens in that third act. Right. Um, as far as the, let's just say, collateral damage that would be necessary yes <laughs> and that's all i'll leave it at <laughs> um, yes. but other than that yeah well, well that's the thing when it comes to this sort of film i do think that you know when you're going into the supernatural shall we say yeah. uh, side of things there's going to be something that doesn't work like there, there's always there, there's always something that you just have to like give mm-hmm. up and say okay Filmatic license, yeah, fine. Exactly, yeah. You have to have a, a license of oh, suspended yeah. disbelief in it, yeah, because otherwise it would be just science fact. You know, it wouldn't be science fiction. You know, <laughs> uh, right. which Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> would love. Actually, really. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, we're not friends on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, do you have a favorite moment or scene from the film that really sticks with you? Yes, it would be the. Uh, the, the the line from Hugh Jackman of is, is a kind of a spoiler, I suppose, but it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be in front of the crowd or behind the stage, you know, when I reveal my act. I don't know which one is which, you know, and I think that is so, it's so deep and so, pro- it's like, it's heartbreaking and touching all in the one time when you've watched 
what he's gone through throughout the movie. And it's kind of like, wow, well, how much, how, how far are you willing to go to achieve a uh, stand ovation from an audience? Yeah, and I suppose that also, um, again, trying to remain as well free as possible, begs the question at the end, like, which one is he? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, who is it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm definitely inspired to see it again. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I'd definitely be up for more. Uh, now, the last question that I had wouldn't really work for this film because the uh, standard question that I wrote down was, like, obviously there is no sequel, but like, if you wanted to see more from this world, like, where would you want it to go? But I would say this one is a fairly closed... Fairly loop. contained loop. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Definitely. I, um, I I would say myself that maybe I'd like to see more from Tesla. Like exactly, it's more of a spin-off than a sequel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, we would have to recast that. Part yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe maybe get Andy Circus to do motion capture sure, for, and then <laughs> and then get digital Bowie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'd be into it. Yeah, and, uh, that whole movie is based off a book that's supposed to be absolutely is it's quite different than the movie itself and it's a lot more detailed in the uh the exploration of the great Danton looking for the Tesla's machine. But when uh uh oh I can't even think of what his real name is, Danton anyway, when he um arrives in the hotel to go and see Tesla, there's Edison, Thomas Edison's men are after him to find out what Tesla's secrets are. And that could be quite interesting to see the rivalry between Tesla and Edison. You know, and the whole the under the table kind of black ops kind of style. Yeah. <laughs> Vegas, like he's out there hiring. Well, and then that could also be a. I believe I've seen it referred to as a side call. So, like, we could see that, and then in the middle of that film, you see from Tesla's Wolverine. side him giving the machine. <laughs> yeah, so. I love those little side, like the like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are that like. You know the side character stories. I like this yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, and um, obviously, Ten Cloverfield Lane exists. Still haven't seen it. So don't say anything. Oh. But um, <laughs> the, during sure. Cloverfield, the director has said that the point where the guy with the camera spins around and you see someone else with a camera, and he always wanted to do the story from that guy's point of view. Like, what happened with this other guy who was documenting it? Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I would like to see uh, Edison and Tesla kind of in a. Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter style. Oh. <laughs> okay. I, I imagine Edison would be the vampire in this case. So. Not necessarily that literally, to be taken that literally, but that campy, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I, with that oh, as a pro taste joke, would uh, David Bowie be a mummy, so would he? <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and for no real good reason, he's just wrapped up in bandages the entire time. <laughs> Very badly burned. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right well i think we've all kind of helped so. okay after that riff uh, where are we going uh, yeah, so so we've done the one that you really like and now we need to do the one that you don't like and <laughs> yes. you did mention to us before that you were going to be doing x-men apocalypse until we told you that we just <laughs> reviewed it so yep. So I'm, have you, I'm still happy to talk about all the shitty parts, but we can move on to well, a different. Film. I think this one actually this uh, might be a little bit more interesting actually okay, than X Men yeah. Apocalypse because this is a kind of um, I think it has many people on the fence maybe, or I might be absolutely hated for bringing this one up. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and like last time, I think like, let let's not even try and guess the genre uh, because there are too many bad films and too many genres. I'm, well, I'm going um, all in on horror. Okay, you're going to go horror. over this one? All right, yeah. well, if you are going to guess, then uh, <laughs> I'm going to guess sci-fi, then. All right. Okay. These are both terribly wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of it wrong. It is the whole lot of the James Bond franchise, all 007 movies. Every wow. single one. All right. <laughs> it's, it's more James Bond that pisses me off than the movies themselves, but, you know, he is the movie, so James Bond, all them. Okay. I, I, you know, I think I'm going to be, well, not too bold because you've already put your uh, feet in the water here, but I may not go so strongly as to hate or dislike, but I don't get the obsession with those films. They're, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen one that's been above average. Um, there's certainly been some that were entertaining. I'd say um, the first Daniel Craig one was... Uh, 
Um, well, not Quantum of Solace, but uh, no, Casino Royale. Yeah, just, I thought it was a good film. Um, but that, I mean, it was, I mean, more driven by an interesting plot, not so much just the James Bond character. Oh, yeah. but, and Daniel Craig just doing really well. Yeah, this. really well. But yeah, as a whole, I don't get why we love this guy so much. He's an asshole. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you take it away. It's your thing. But I don't know. Where do you stand? Uh, for me, it's just that, like, you know, he's, he's, he's labeled as the best spy in the world, you know, the greatest ever. But every single movie, he just messes up. He always gets caught. He always, like, <laughs> you know, he's, he's never as good as... If, if he's the best, I'd hate to see what the worst spy is. <laughs> you know? That would be Johnny. <laughs> yes, it would. I was going to know that. <laughs> like, they, uh, they have so many amazing female actors in the movies, and... They have the basis of amazing female characters, but once James Bond shows up, they just become this this sidekick uh, love interest. That's all they, they ever do, you know. Uh, guess what? Monica Double Lucy. Agent. <laughs> yeah, it's like Monica Lucy was in the last one, and all she does is uh, she's a widow who has sex with James Bond. That that's literally it. She's an amazing actress. You know? Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's sad that all the female characters are so one dimensional in those films. Yeah, I I do think that. That is an unfortunate, especially with the new film, that is an unfortunate layover from the original formula for Bond. Because mm-hmm. back then, obviously, you got the uh, Sean Connery era and all of that. Like, the, the female characters only exist to be eye candy and yeah. either to sleep with James Bond and die, or to sleep with James Bond turned out to be working with the villain and then probably die. So, yeah. it's the there's not much leeway there. And it's at points just downright gratuitous. I mean, I'm for a little bit of skin, I guess you could say, if it serves the story, and it never does. It's always gratuitous. No, like, there's never been a sex scene that has propelled the story. No. You, know, you never have to see it. Like, it's uh, <laughs> what with the Pierce Brosnan one, like Holly Berry. <laughs> I know which was an homage to an earlier film, just walking in slow motion out of the water in the, the bikini. Not enough, yeah, right? but I know that was an homage to an earlier film, a uh, Bond film, but I can't think of it right now. But yeah, I mean, okay, we get it. All right, she looks good in the bikini. I think in all Bond. these, <laughs> yeah, all these James Bond movies, they try to recreate the wrong things. You know, they always focus on the uh, the superficial aspects of it instead of the heart of the stories. You know, like I did enjoy the earlier ones because you know that was the time. That's that's what you expect. You expect a, a womanizing man. You know, who smokes mm. and who drinks heavy, and you know he's a. Uh, He's rough cut and chiseled, but, you know, you have to move along with the times. And every other franchise, I suppose, has got that. Like a Batman, you know, for instance, they've moved along with the, with the times from Adam West to now Ben Affleck, you know, it's, but this bond has, he's always been stagnant. You know, the only thing that moves is the technology that the villain uses. It's the only thing that ever kind of progresses. Yeah. And I, I actually, I hate the fact that you had some great actors playing in some of these roles and and then for no reason whatsoever in the Pierce Brosnan one all of a sudden John Cleese popped up as <laughs> uh, I believe it was Q it was like yeah. he was in it for one film and then Pierce Brosnan stopped making Bond films and <laughs> now John Cleese is no longer Q or, yeah I don't know <laughs> and, like, and he had by far the best lines in that film as well uh, I think he's showing uh, Piers Brosnan, Bond, the car, the Vanquish that can vanish, and Piers, he hands him the instruction manual, and Brosnan just throws it at the car, which then shoots it with the machine gun. And then John Cleese just looks straight at Brosnan and just says, I wish I could make you vanish. <laughs> yeah, so do we, actually. <laughs> I would have five him if I was in the room. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we're ready for a progressive Bond. I would love to see a little evolution in the character. I don't know. Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, I, I personally would like to see why this uh, specific designation is called Bond, because it's heavily implied that each Bond that we see is a different person. Yeah, it's a title, and, not a name. And they are yeah. known as Jane Bond from the second they are 007. So, yeah. like, why? I, even though. For whatever reason, even though it's heavily implied that that's the case, there are still people that know them from before that who still call them James. I mean, maybe everyone that applies 
called James ends up getting this position. <laughs> you, I that's one of the criteria. You must be named James. <laughs> we'll fudge the surname, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but I mean, may, or maybe even a uh, maybe ha- it's time for a gay James Bond. So, <laughs> so all of the women that are sent to him, like it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you had to have the effeminate uh, villain to yeah. be able like, to get him over. Just judging on how they've handled him already, I think that would be the most offensive character in movie history if they put in a gay James Bond because they just wouldn't be able to handle him. They just would turn him into a slut, basically. I, you know, it's. Yeah. <laughs> I loved the uh, Idris Elba rumors. Um, I thought he would make a fantastic James Bond. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, he's yeah. charming and good looking, and he definitely can act. Um, I I would love to see those films, but yeah, you know, uh, apparently I, he was not. Well, too, I, too street was the unfortunate <laughs> term that was used. Well, I really want to see, and I guess you could argue Mission Impossible has done it is the American James Bond, because I want to see how badly that goes over, and then we can say, well, look, James Bond <laughs> yes. over here so is doing exactly the, the same burn. thing. But yeah. you don't have a problem. Is it because he's English? Is it the accent that wins everyone <laughs> over? I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't <laughs> and, know either. And yeah, I, I I definitely would argue, especially with the last one, that they so poorly handled Blofeld that like, maybe... I didn't even bother with Spectre. Yeah, uh, yeah it, and it's, it was such a shame. Right? They, they've been doing well on some counts and uh, like i i would say skyfall is my favorite really? of the bomb the, film just kind of the, the story was so well the, done even the uh the third act borrowed from home alone well yes <laughs> okay yeah if you gotta borrow from anything home alone just i guess yeah but uh, but yeah i i i felt for bond it was great because it mostly just dealt with him mm. like there wasn't a huge amount of all of this espionage and stuff that he's so normally doing and as you pointed out Stephen so normally messing up and then having to fix his messes uh, it was just him dealing with his past catching up with him and an evolution as well with uh, the death of a major character again mm-hmm. which I'm not to get too much of a spoiler here so yeah, I, I think it would be interesting to renew it, but unfortunately, I think the formula is so rigid at this point, they're not really going to do much with it. Yeah, I think you have a great point there with the whole Skyfall thing and what made it good, but I think it's because they they took his flaw and they embraced it and made it part of the story. You know, that that was his uh, his history. That was what was holding him back and what kind of crippled him. You know, and he had to deal with that and he had to face it and come to terms with it. Uh, for me, if I was doing a James Bond movie right now, I would reboot the whole thing right back to the start and have him a flawed spy and basically have him become the ultimate spy over a three arc movie, you know, over a trilogy and make him earn that. Because whenever James Bond enters the screen, we're just told he is the best. He never earns it. And, you know, for any great hero, look at Neo from The Matrix. You know, he has to earn the right to be the one. You know, you talk about any hero in any action movie, they have to earn that moment. James Bond never does that. And that's I think that's what point, they have yeah. to focus on. Yeah, he is, he is just introduced as the best spy. And yeah. obviously when it comes to comedy films like Austin Powers, like that's that works because it's like, A, he obviously isn't that great a spy, but everyone just kind of runs with it or, yeah. <laughs> or just because it's kind of hilarious that this guy is the world's best spy. Whereas in James Bond, he is just a great spy. And I, I do think, especially in recent films, it's acknowledged that he isn't the best spy in the world, mm. but he is still good enough that yeah. he's not being kicked out of the agency. <laughs> this is kind of a reference that's popping into my head and I don't know how many people will get it, but um, the video game or, I didn't see the film, but a little more Max Payne style. A little more, or another reference like Man on Fire. You know, mm-hmm. like um, some hard edges to him. Some some unlikable characteristics. Don't be afraid you know, don't be afraid to give him flaws. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. Weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Everyone has them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Our greatest heroes in cinema history have flaws, you know, and you you love them because of that. You know, Snake Plissken 
you know, he is not a, uh, he's not a nice guy, you know, he's not someone who you want to be friends with necessarily, you know, he not, you'd know he's going to screw you over, but he's an amazing hero because, you know, he's going to do the things that no one else wants to do. You know, he's, <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, I think what we actually want from James Bond is Kingsman. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what we want. Got, oh, damn it, I love it. And I, I'm, I'm so looking forward to the sequel or prequel or whatever it is they're making because it is heavily implied that Colin Firth will be back. Oh. Um, so uh, I'm okay if he doesn't, but I would love it if he did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. Like Kingsman is an amazing story. Uh, Born, Jason Bourne, Mission Impossible. We've all mentioned them already. They are doing James Bond better than James Bond can do himself. You know, they they all have that, and it's so. I think James Bond now in this era is kind of pointless. That you need to give him, you need to retire him for a while and give him a bit of a break, yeah. or go a completely different route, get, make it a female, or make him really old. Like I'd love to see Jeremy Irons as a, an old James Bond. You know, it's oh, yeah. something completely different than what everyone else is doing. I mean, maybe James Bond becomes the new M. Like he, he is forced yeah. to retire and become M, and then it, the film is him struggling to do that and still getting out in the field a bit. And, and there's a new Bond, so he's, he's having <laughs> kind of like Creed, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. He, he's having Rocky moving to the sidelines. He, he's yeah. being he is literally being forced to hand over the reins to another Bond, and he's mm. having to deal yep. with that. Well, sadly, it, it's reported that I think it's. Theo James or something that I think is going to be the next Bond, which uh, just young, good-looking actor doesn't look like this. You know, it looks like a very predictable casting choice. Is all I'm saying. You know, um, <laughs> Tom Hiddleston as true. well as being kind of pipped yeah. for that role, and I, I, I just think that it could ruin him. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of like to see Benedict Cumberbatch. Not just because we really like <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch, but I think he'd be an interesting choice for that. Mm. He'd just be a slightly uh, slightly He's more socially perfect. awkward <laughs> version yeah. of Bond. Fastbender? Uh, Fastbender can do anything. Fastbender can do anything, yeah. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis, why the hell not? <laughs> oh, God, yeah. That'll be the day. You're never getting Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. Michael Caine, let's just say that everyone's thinking it. Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Caine. <laughs> yeah, just, just yeah. so that everyone will then, ha- just like the Sean Connery, everyone will have the accent down pat. <laughs> everyone <laughs> will be Bond. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do think that's the problem then. Like, it, I think Bond should just stick to, at this point now, just the books because he's from an era that doesn't exist anymore, and yeah, that's yeah, how the they're writing. Moved on, yeah. So like, maybe just leave him with the books and just let's try and let Kingman become the new Bond. Let's just let's try. And have, have you that. seen um, Man from Uncle? I have. Yes, that's the best James Bond movie we've seen in years. <laughs> It was quite good, actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to just a standalone, yeah. you know, that Cold War atmosphere. That's it's the uh, the it's the right environment to have that kind of character. You know, that that the, the espionage moments. Right. Yeah, and you, I think you hit the nail on the head there as well. Like it's dated. They have a specific yeah. time period it's in, which explains some of the behavior. Whereas this modern Bond is supposed to be in this day and time, and so. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe that's also part of the reason why it's not really working yeah. anymore. And yeah, I don't need new gadgets or flashier cars to make a better film. You know, I want a yeah. compelling characters and a well-written story. And I'll watch a James, you know, and I'll like a James Bond film. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't need a new car that turns invisible or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the iPhone has killed suspense as well. You know, it's, it, it has destroyed any kind of. Um, movie technology because like most of the things that we would have associated with spy movies like in the last 20 years we can now do ourselves on our handheld device it's, it's so easy so yeah, like we talk about point. this on our episodes all the time whenever we do anything like this like we need to find a way to get rid of phones <laughs> 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 we need to find a way to get rid of all that sort of stuff and then we can have some fun yeah or, or maybe have it so that the villain is using something which will use your phone to do something which Oh, are we that, talking about the NSA now? Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, you're not necessarily disabling all phones, but you're enabling something so that while you're using the phone, the villain is advancing his agenda as well. So mm. um, He's reading your Facebook posts. Yep. Yeah, it, the villain is losing faith in humanity. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. taking all that out. All right, so at the end of this, we've come up with go and watch The Prestige 
and do not watch any Bond ever. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I don't care if it's the marathon on whatever holiday that is. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and definitely do not, under any circumstances, watch the Pierce Brosnan Bond. Just, just don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't play the N sixty four game. Don't watch the movie. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, Bond can exist just because of the Golden Eye game, and then that is it. <laughs> yes, that is the best James Bond movie. <laughs> is playing uh, Golden Eye. Yeah. If you could only watch one James Bond movie, though, what would you go for? If if you were to say to me to kind of you know rethink your whole idea about being the worst movie ever, try this one and reconsider. What would you go for? I think I said it before. It has to be Skyfall, just because they focus on the character mm-hmm. and not the situations. So uh, yeah, if I'm going modern uh, modern times, I would go Casino Royale. Um, not not the you know Peter Sellers. Because you know, right now, <laughs> yeah. um, which I mean, Bondists or whatever they call themselves, uh, yeah. contend you know that that is not a Bond film. But you know, the character is called James Bond. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the most recent Skyfall. If I'm going a little uh, further back, I, I might say uh, Goldfinger. Um, yeah, so but... that's a fun film to watch. It, yeah. It's not great, but it, it, it's it's just a fun fun two hours. Yeah, and, and there's yeah. not there's not too much to it. I mean, the villain is just trying to the break villain into is Fort Knox. Just you might as well be called. <laughs> Mr. McVillainy. It's just yeah. <laughs> it's it's Mr. Mustache Twirl, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just go all out Snidely Whiplash. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. He is so tr- villain tropey. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, well, what, what about you then? Like, do you have a Jane Bond film that you don't mind watching? The one that I didn't hate was Casino Royale. You know, I, I did enjoy for what it was. It's. It has its flaws, obviously, but I think it's the more enjoyable of them. I think what they were trying to do was cool. That uh, they just they messed everything up when they done all the sequels. You know, it's like I think Brian Singer does the same thing with all his X Men movies. As soon as he does something really good in the next movie, he reverts on that and messes that moment up. You know, um, yeah. I, I think it. This Jane Bond series is actually going the way of the original Star Trek films, which is every other one. Is not that bad, and, every, and then every other one is crap. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope for Beyond, but that's a con- <laughs> the conversation for another day. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, again, thanks Stephen for coming yeah, on. Uh, uh, thanks for having me, guys. It's been brilliant fun. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. It's just Storybreaker Simply, uh, the Storybreakers dot com, or Storybreakers at Gmail dot com. Right. And, it's a great podcast, guys. Check it out. Yeah, it's, it's, very it's, much. it's a lot You're of fun. Welcome. And it, and do find us as well on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even though we're not using it that much. <laughs> That's all Blokebusters. Email us, blokebusterpodcast at gmail.com. Once again, I forgot the S, the second S. <laughs> was, we no, also but, respond to Signal Beacons, um, <laughs> Telegrams. Uh, yes, yes yeah, the, the Flames of Gondor. All yes. there. Uh, so... Yes, well, thank you for listening. Thank you again, Stephen, for coming on. Yes, thank you, Stephen. Cheers, guys. And we hope to hear from you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.